Hey guys, welcome back. So this video, we're gonna talk all things spirituality. I asked you guys a few days ago on Instagram if you had any questions about my spiritual practice or about spirituality in general. And so we're gonna be doing a little q and I've divided the questions into three sections. My spiritual journey, my spiritual path, how I got to where I am today, what spirituality means to me. Second section will be about my spiritual practice, Falun Dafa, what it is, how I came across it, what it means to me, how it's made me a better person, how you can get started if it's something that you're interested in. And the last section will be answering any questions you guys have on spirituality in general. I feel like it's worth noting that spirituality is a very personal thing, so it'll mean very different things to every single person. I highly, highly, highly encourage every single one of you guys to embark on your own spiritual quest spiritual journey to find what your thing is because although what I'm going to be sharing is what worked for me it may work for some of you but it may not for most other people so highly highly encourage to find a thing that works for you okay so the first question what was the reason for you looking into spirituality? If you guys have been following me for a while, you know who I was versus who I am now and how much I've changed as a person overall. I'll link a video up here and down below. It's the I've changed and how I've changed my life. Old Rowena used to party all the time. I drank four to five days out of the week, raves, music festivals, did the things, had fun, had nice things, going to fancy restaurants and doing the things that were literally way beyond my means, if I'm being very honest with myself. I did all those things and I still felt so unfulfilled and so empty and so, like I just felt like my life didn't have any meaning. I did all the things, I checked all the boxes that society tells me I need to check and I should check for me to be happy, but doing all the all those things actually made me so much more unfulfilled. And so I'm gonna read you guys really quickly what the definition of spirituality means on the interweb. So it's the quality of being concerned with the human spirit and or soul as opposed to material or physical things. My life revolved around material and physical things. And because doing that, which is what I thought I should be doing, still made me feel so empty. I was like, okay, what is the opposite of that? Or what's something else that I could do to maybe find that peace of mind, find that fulfillment, find that meaning? And it was what led me to start asking myself like, okay, why are you so unfulfilled? Why do you feel like your life has no meaning? And what does it mean to be fulfilled? What does it mean to live a fulfilling life? What would that look like? How would that look like? Why do you want to live a fulfilling life? So like asking myself all of these questions, which slowly opened me up and opened up my mind and my heart and my existence to the possibility that like, okay, maybe you don't know everything. I thought I knew everything growing up. So yes, the reason for me looking into spirituality, I just felt really empty, lonely, vacant, sad, down, depressed, and like, no meaning so i started reading into a lot of books a lot of articles a lot of different things that all pointed to spirituality so i was like okay let me give it a try okay so have you ever explored other religions or did you grow up with your current practice i did grow up with my current practice but before my mom found Falun Dafa, which is when i was about nine or ten years old she was practicing something else completely different which is a spiritual practice from india there's meditation yoga and social services my mom was vegetarian i was so i was vegetarian i did yoga with her at a young age yeah i just you know that was my childhood i feel like i've always had a very like i've always been in very spiritual because my mom was very spiritual and so growing up even middle school high school because a lot of my friends were christian i would go to church with them it was more so of like a it was kind of like a cool thing because like all the cool kids went to church so i was like okay let me go to church to see what it's like and i really appreciated how my parents were just like yeah if you want to go explore go explore if you want to go do anything as long as it's teaching you how to be a good person go try it out so all that being said when my mom found Falun Dafa in 2000 and i think like 2001 or 2002 the way that she'd explained it to me is that she felt like she spent her whole life looking for her thing and when she read john Falun, which is the book written by the founder of Falun Dafa she was like this is it this is what i've been waiting for and looking for my whole life so i'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to this and when she kind of introduced it to me like of course like as a mom who's like super excited that she found her practice she's like trying to make my brother and i practice too and while we did and we grew up with the principles like i never really cherished it because it's kind of like something that was just handed to you versus something that you actually looked for and found so that was a very long way of saying i grew up with it but i didn't cherish it and i didn't 
see it, the importance in it until I looked for it myself and until my quest of finding spiritual slash personal fulfillment and what it means to live a meaningful life brought me back to my spiritual practice. All right, so now we're gonna move into the second section of Fallen Dafa, my spiritual practice, what it is, what it entails, all of that good stuff. So the first question is, how intensely has your spiritual practice changed your life? I'd say very intensely and for all the right reasons and in the best way possible. How did you come to believe what you do? How has your practice benefited you? And what made you decide to put a strong focus on it? So when I was at my lowest, many, 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 many levels below rock bottom, Fallen Daffa really taught me how to cherish myself, how to love myself, how to look inward, how to let go, how to just be a good person. And it gave me hope when I had none and it gave me something greater to believe in, which I feel like at the time when I was really not okay in the depths of like my eating disorder and just like being not okay all the time. Um, it helped me get out of my own head. It helped me realize that there's so much more to life than living in here and like being so attached to all of these things, which is making you suffer, <laughs> suffer. Well, yeah, which is making you suffer so much in here. In Buddhism, it is believed that to be human is to suffer and we suffer as humans because we're attached to things. And what attachment means to me is that attachments are like, you will do things out of attachment. So like you'll do things out of your attachment to yourself, out of your attachment to sentimentality, out of your attachment to emotion, to your ego, to like pride, to fame, to money. You are driven by your attachment. We're all driven by our attachments to some extent or another. So that's what means when I say attachments. How did you know this is your solution? How did you choose why Fallen Dafa? Again, with what I said earlier about spirituality being a very personal thing, when I really looked into and read into Fallen Dafa for myself, as opposed to my mom telling me what to do when I was younger, I realized that, wow, this is actually, it answered every single question I had about my life, about existence, about my purpose here on earth, about my purpose as a human. Another thing is that in this world that's constantly telling you to be everything other than who you are, I feel like that's what society does for us or what it does to us. I really appreciated the principles within Falun Dafa that just is rooted in looking inward, rooted in self-betterment, improving yourself internally so that you can help everyone and everything around you. Staying true to yourself. What does it mean to stay true to yourself? How can you stay true to yourself? And why is it important to stay true to yourself? People have become a lot more spiritual, which is a great thing, but I also feel like a lot of people are talking the talk, but they're not walking the walk. Crystals, burning sage, tarot cards reading, astronomy, rising suns, setting moons, like all of those things. I believe those things do work, but I feel like our society is putting too much emphasis on the external and not as much on the internal because no matter how much stuff you burn, no matter how many crystals you lay on your forehead and your chest and your body, even though it can help to a certain extent. If you don't work on here, then nothing's really gonna change. And I think because Fallen Dafa advocated for the internal stuff, I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> I think this is it. What are the basics of your spiritual practice? I'm gonna read you guys something someone wrote who is a practitioner of Falun Dafa of what Falun Gong is. Falun Gong is a traditional Chinese practice of self-cultivation, a term that refers to transforming the self through more discipline and special meditative exercises. Practitioners of the discipline seek to adhere to the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance in daily life and reflect on the difficulties that befall them as opportunities for internal betterment. Okay, so one thing, Falun Gong and Falun Dafa are the same thing following means the law wheel and following gong gong is like um it's like qi gong um i'll throw up what gong means i can't think of it off the top of my head actually uh ee! a practice that cultivates the energy so qi gong following gong it's you know following gong and then following dafa following again is law wheel dafa is the great way so the literal translation of da is big and fa is let me also refer reference the book the law and principles in the buddha school hopefully that helps you guys get some context into what this means what falun dafa means to me and this is all based off of my understanding is it's really teaching, it really taught me how to be a good person based off of the universal principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. So how can you cultivate your mind and your heart to be as truthful as you can, as compassionate as you can, and as tolerant as you can? We probably all understand like what it means to be a truthful person, what it means to be a compassionate person. How to be a tolerant person was something that I kind of struggled with. I was like, okay, what does it mean to be tolerant? Like, do I just endure? Do I just bite my teeth and like let things happen to me and not do anything? And I think that's a part of it. 
it. But my mom told me very recently, one of her friends um, told her, and she's also a practitioner of Falun Dafa, she was saying how tolerance is like the sun. The sun rises and the sun sets every single day, 365 days out of the year for many, many eons now. Like it's just, it's what it does. And when it rises, it shines its light on every single person, on every single animal, on every single thing, regardless if that person or thing is a good or bad person, regardless if that person is rich or poor, regardless if that person is a guy or a female, a guy or a male or a female, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, what kind of a person you are, it will shine its light on you. When my mom told me that, I was like, tolerance, yes. So those are the guiding principles of Falun Dafa, which is truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Because Falun Dafa is a school of Buddhism, there's a lot of Buddhist principles like always looking inward and letting go of attachments, both I've kind of talked about. Looking inward in a sense where it's like, regardless if you're at fault or not, with any situation that you come across, you're constantly looking inward to be like, okay, what did I do? How can I improve? How can I be better? Even if I didn't do anything wrong, is this situation trying to show me something? What is it trying to show me? And how can I use it to better and to improve myself moving forward? So that is the looking inward part and the letting go of attachments. We talked about earlier of how attachments are the driving forces behind why we do what we do. And it is believed that the more you let go of attachments, the more you're able to elevate your mind elevate your heart which in turn will help you be able to cultivate better and for you to continue to be a better version of yourself which is the ultimate goal of you know what i'm trying to do those are like the higher principles and if we want to talk about cultivation so in chinese it's called shou lian shou is cultivation lian is practice and so shou cultivation is cultivation of the mind practice lian is like physical exercises that we do. So like qigong and meditation. So let's start with the first part, which is show cultivation. So the definition of cultivation is the process of trying to acquire or develop a quality or skill. So to me, cultivate, like the part cultivation really is like cultivating your mind and cultivating your heart and cultivating your overall being and it's a very mental thing it's a very internal thing and it's it doesn't require any action it's just like how do you continue to work on your mind how do you continue to cultivate yourself so that you can live really live talk the talk and walk the walk of what it means to be truthful compassionate and tolerant practice is where qigong comes in in Falun Dafa there's five sets of exercises four of them are physical standing exercises exercises which is qigong and then the fifth exercise is an hour of meditation i won't get too much into this if you guys are curious i'm going to link everything down below you can read into the practices yourself because i am still a student of this practice the best and the most that i can do is share with you guys my experience but i think for you guys if you are curious and learning more about what all of this is you should look into it and read into it on your own. I know you guys would much prefer that I tell you guys, but I think, you know, this is like the existence of my channel. I want you guys to think for yourselves and I want you guys to come up with conclusions and do things you want to because you want to do it, not because I'm here telling you guys what to do. So with all that being said, what is Qigong? Qigong is a form of traditional Chinese exercise that cultivates qi or vital energy in your body. So in English, because <laughs> um, that, that also doesn't really mean much to me. In traditional Chinese medicine, it is believed that there are meridians all over our bodies. And when meridians are blocked or over time, toxins build up and it blocks certain meridians. That's where, you know how in traditional Chinese medicine, they take your pulse and when they take your pulse, you're like, you know, really listening to your pulse and they can tell which meridian is blocked. When meridians are blocked, that's when health issues come up. So for example, for me, it's eczema. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I've been breaking out and like my eczema has been flaring out a lot because I haven't been as diligent with my qigong and my meditation practice. When I do it consistently, all of it is gone. My face is completely clear. I don't get any pimples. My eczema is gone, but when I don't, it, you know, hello. Yeah, like pimples or I covered it up a little. Um, but anyway, what Qigong does is that it helps connect and it helps the meridians flow a lot better. So when your meridians are flowing and when they're all connected, it also helps your body keep in a healthy state all the while cleansing your mind, body, and soul. Your mind, it helps you focus, concentrate, let go of negative thoughts. Your body, it helps strengthen your body and gives you more energy. And for your soul, it's kind of like spirituality. It allows you to be more connected to the universe. All right, so how does a beginner get into learning about Falun Dafa? How can I start practicing it? I would highly recommend reading into it online. I'll leave everything 
linking down below. So the website is in many, many languages. So you should be able to find it in your native language. What it is, how to practice it, what is Qigong, how to practice Qigong, what are the four exercises, what is the meditation exercise, what is it about, the books that I'm about to reference in the next question. You can start practicing on your own, but I will highly recommend you reach out to local contacts if they are in your area. There's a lot of practitioners who will go to local parks to do the exercises in the mornings. I think it's helpful to, to immerse yourself in the community so that you'd be able to ask questions if you have any questions, because if I could meet every single one of you guys individually, I would love to do that, but it's just, it's kind of hard because I feel like we're from very, very different parts of the world um, or we're all from different parts of the world what books would you recommend so there's two books the first one is Falun Gong so Falun Gong if you're not as familiar with Qigong Buddhist principles and ancient Chinese culture I recommend starting with this book which gives a brief intro into the essential concepts of Qigong and exercises of Falun Dafa and the second book is Zhuan Falun which is the book that we read um, I try to read it every single day at least one lecture a day so Zhuan Falun when the founder of Falun Dafa was teaching teaching publicly. This is back in China in the early 90s. He taught nine-day lecture classes in person and so the book is transcribed from these lectures and translated into many many languages so i read in both chinese and english and you should be able to find your native language again with um with all of this and it'll all be linked down below so um if you are interested in learning and in practicing Falun Dafa this is what you should start with um and it'll help explain everything and this was the book that helped me go like oh so this is the thing that I've been looking for my whole life. Why are practitioners of your faith so persecuted in China? So because of the nature of the practice is so holistic and wholesome and like the values of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, you can't, no one, no one's gonna be like, no, those are the wrong principles. Like you can't do that. Any person who has their head relatively straight on their head will be like, yeah, like agree. Those are good principles to have. So because of that, the students grew really quickly from a hundred to over a hundred million over the span of less than a decade. The Chinese government was very supportive of Falun Dafa when it first was first founded in China. But once it grew to that hundred million number, they're like, wait, what if? they want to revolt. What if they want to do the things like they can totally because the number of people practicing was just, is too much for a communist government to handle. So what they resorted to was a nationwide crackdown, propaganda campaign saying everyone who practices Falun Dafa is evil and is a cult. So I think it's rooted in fear. It's rooted in the president at that time felt threatened. And so, yeah, like if I, where to go to, like I can't, I probably can't even go to China because I talk about this stuff on my channel. So I'm not gonna get into too much of that in this video, but if you guys are interested in learning more, I'll leave down two links to two really great documentaries that go in depth about organ harvesting um, called Human Harvest. And another one is the modern day concentration camps or like recorrectional centers or like brainwashing centers. What do you gain physically and mentally from your spirituality? So on the surface, I'd say physically, your body is in a healthy state in general like i haven't been sick for many many years now and from mentally i gain like mental clarity i gain calm peace of mind um happy mind happy life i don't know yeah oh yeah and like peace of mind i feel like all the questions that i have about existence purpose meaning fulfillment like we're all answered all right so what are your doubts concerning your beliefs i doubt every once in a while if any of this is even real if my faith is even real if there is a god if there are gods if there's buddhas it's like qigong energy thing if any of that is even real what i always 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 come back to is that even if all of this were balonies and even if all of this were not real the principles that have been instilled in me and the principles that i'm living by have allowed me to really become a better person and have really shaped me into the person that I've always wanted to be so even if that were all fake like the spiritual elements were all not real the fact that I was able to benefit so much from it regardless of that that's honestly more than I could ever ask for this is something that the founder of Falun Dafa talks about as well is that within any spiritual practice there will be tests of do you have faith how much faith do you have do you really have faith like do you really believe and so I've grown to learn that all of this is a part of the process and that doubt and fear and like like all of these feelings like any feeling in general it's like it's a part of the process that are trying to see if you do have faith if you do believe if you really really you know 
are living, are, are walking the walk instead of just talking the talk. So the next question, was there a change in your life immediately or was it a progression? So I think there's definitely both. Immediate change was like, okay, now it was like a very quick switch of like, okay, this is gonna be my future now. This is how I'm gonna be a person. This is what, what I'm gonna do. And this is my mission. And this is my purpose as a human. So that was like very quickly, but the gradual letting go of attachments, the gradual letting go of this person that I should be, this person that like, that took a long time. Even like who I was half a year ago, a year ago, two years ago, I look back and I'm like, oh, why were you like that? Like, why did you say that? Why did you do that? Why did you care so much about things that you shouldn't care about that much? What are the biggest challenges slash hurdles you went through in your spiritual journey? I think in the beginning, the biggest, biggest hurdle was learning how to forgive myself because i did a lot of things that i wasn't proud of i did a lot of things that i knew i shouldn't have done felt like i was unworthy i felt like i wasn't good enough i feel like i just i wasn't deserving of this profound thought and what helped me a lot i'm gonna read a passage from the founder of falun dafa so i'm gonna call him shifu or master so it's not like master it's um in chinese shi is teacher fu is father so of course you might get bumps and bruises here and there sometimes or frequently stumble or handle one thing well and another thing not too well but that's a part of the cultivation process as long as you can persevere and get through it you're remarkable if you can do what a dafa disciple is supposed to do you're remarkable that's how it's looked at to truly have no problems at all, handle everything well, and charge forward all the way through, well, there are individuals like that, but there are few and far between and truly just extraordinary. However, not everyone can be like that. With cultivation, who is mistake-free? Some people might have made some serious mistakes while others somewhat lesser of mistakes, but if you can wake up to it, take responsibility for it, figure out your problems, and do well going forward, then that is cultivation. This passage was what really helped allow me to forgive myself and all the things that i've done and to be like okay you made mistakes in the past that's okay it's part of cultivation you go forward sometimes you go backwards sometimes but as long as you're doing your best to move forward don't let your past hold you back like don't be attached to your past so that's another form of attachment so next how does your belief influence your morals i'm interested to see how much of an impact it has in your daily life. So the foundation of my morals are rooted in my spiritual practice. Like everything that I do, my existence, my being, the way that I talk, the way that I dress, the way that I carry myself, myself, I have multiple selves, the way that I carry myself is all rooted in my spiritual practice. So it has infiltrated every aspect of my life in the best way possible and I couldn't be happier because I never want to go back to who I used to be and how I used to feel because that's not a good place to be. Okay. Is there a hierarchy associated with Falun Dafa? No, there's only one teacher who's the founder of Falun Dafa and the rest of us are students. So I'm a student no matter when I started practicing. And if you start practicing, you're a student and we're all students, which is again, also why I, I can't, like I'm a student of the practice, so I'm still learning. So I can't teach you guys these things. So if you're curious about learning as I am learning, read the book, you know? look into the things. I don't know why I'm going like this. And the sun is about to set again. This is just my life. My, I'm always chasing the sunset. Do you feel a sense of connection to others who also practice? Absolutely. I feel like of course if they practice, I feel closer to them because we operate on the same wavelength. I don't know, like we're rooted within the same principles and the same values, but I feel like that aside, just spirituality, faith, what religion teach, us in general is just really how do you be a good person and at the root of it's be kind be compassionate have grace you know do the right things for example like some of you who are watching this although we may have different religious or spiritual beliefs we still feel this like closeness and kinship in the understanding of like faith is a very universal thing belief is a very universal thing anyone who is spiritual anyone who does have faith anyone who does believe in these greater powers I do feel extra close to them because it's like we have a common understanding and com common interest. Common interest, sure. Um, is there a concept of hope in Falun Dafa and a reason for why we exist? Yes, there is. And I've talked a lot about purpose, meaning, finding all of that. And I'm not going to go into what it means because it's just, it's all what it means to me. If you guys want to look more about it or if you guys want to find your own answers, again, highly recommend reading John Fallon, highly recommend into looking into the practice. Do you believe in God? Have you always believed in God? Is that necessary to your spiritual practice? Yes, I believe in God. 
I've always believed in God in some context or another. Is that necessary to your spiritual practice? Mm. So I think within any spiritual practice, within any religion, the element of faith and belief is very central to all of that. So I'd say yes. Yeah. And if we want to talk specifically about which God and which gods, I believe there's a creator of the universe. And I believe there are many, many, many different layers of gods pulling from Buddhist principles. And within the layers and different types of gods, there's Jesus, there's Buddha, there's the Buddha, um, Bu Buddha Shijamoni, Shakyamuni, who founded Buddhism. There's um, Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism. And yeah, I just believe ultimate creator. And then everything else. Does your spiritual practice have any rules about diet and food? So there aren't any rules about diet and food. If anything, it's letting go of the attachment to food. I used to be vegetarian. I would put myself on like these really weird diets outwardly for like ethical reasons, because I care about animals, because I want to be healthier. But I realize now that me doing all of those things was because I actually wanted to be skinny. Like I wanted to look a certain way. I wanted to appear a certain way. And when I realized that, I realized it was less about the foods that I was eating and more about the attachment I had to food and the very, very unhealthy relationship I have with food. So I think I talked about this in a previous video. Um, it might be the 26 things I learned at 26. Historically, when Buddhism was first founded, I know Buddhism now, um, there's a lot of vegetarians or you're supposed to be vegetarian but back in the day when Shakyamuni the founder of Buddhism was spreading his fa, spreading his principles, laws, his disciples weren't required to be vegetarians because back then food supplies and everything was low so you just eat what you're given you can't really be choosy with what you're given because if you are then you'll probably die and all of these are explained all of these principles are explained in the book John Fallon and every principle that I'm explaining is pulled from John Fallon. So yes. All right, now we're at the third section of just general Q&A about spirituality and my thoughts. What does your faith say about sadness and despair? From my understanding, sadness and despair is a part of life. Like you need to feel sad and just how do you, what's the definition of despair? Sometimes I need a double check just in case. All right, despair, the complete loss or absence of hope for those of you who may also be curious about what the actual definition is. You know how some words you're like, oh yeah, I know what despair means, but like, what does it really mean? Like, ah, okay. So what does your faith say about sadness and despair? So from my understanding, sadness and despair are needed for you to know, like you need to know what the negative is before you can know and appreciate the positive. So, I like to believe that everything that we go through in life is for us to be able to get to where we are today or where we are eventually. So to feel sad, to have despair, to feel lost, to feel like hopeless, to feel any of those things, it's a part of the process and it's necessary for you to get to where you ultimately want to go. So don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be too sad. Don't be too hopeless because if you believe there's hope, if you believe there's a greater force that's looking out for you that's that wants the best for you and if you keep searching for that and if you keep trying to find what that is for you you will be able to get closer and closer to what that is um and again it goes back to buddhist principles of to be human means to suffer and you suffer because of attachment so why do you feel sad why do you feel hopeless can you find the roots of these feelings and why you feel this way and try to work your way backwards from that how does spirituality help keep the general doubt and fear and uncertainty away spirituality doesn't keep doubt fear and uncertainty away i think fear doubt and all of these negative feelings is very innate to us as humans but i think spirituality mixed with faith and belief is what helps us keep those things at bay but that being said it's gonna be there for a long time forever i still have moments of doubt i still have moments of fear i still have moments of uncertainty but i think it's like in these moments of doubt fear and uncertainty can you come out of it and how can you come out of it how did you help yourself come out of it or how did you use spirituality to help yourself come out of it what do you believe in regarding afterlife heaven reincarnation i believe in afterlife i believe in heaven i believe every religion any spiritual practice they have if it's an upright practice and that's not for me to decide it's not for you to decide it's for higher beings and higher powers to decide if it is an upright practice they'll have their own paradises in which they save i guess their people christianity jesus heaven buddha shakamuni you know they have their own paradise um there's the medicine buddha and there's like all these different tathagatas and different buddhas they have their own paradises reincarnation i do believe in reincarnation in buddhism it 
does believe in reincarnation of how in this life I may be a human, past life I could be a plant or an animal or I could be a human. Um, it's just what I believe in. Okay, how do you incorporate your spirituality in your daily life even when it feels like it's too difficult? I think because my spirituality is a very internal thing like i could do it anywhere literally like i can look inward anywhere i can exercise compassion anywhere i can exercise tolerance anywhere i can exercise truthfulness or being truthful anywhere and that because that is like the core foundation of the cultivation within cultivation practice surely and cultivation right um yeah i can do it anywhere so the practice part is where i've been slacking a little um and i'm trying really hard to get back on track of meditating and exercising daily and it's a journey we're on we're all on a journey have you ever had any doubts in your spiritual practice i think i answered this already how do you deal with slash embrace your doubts going back to what i said earlier it's important i think doubt is an important element to have in any spiritual practice because it allows you and it helps you push forward it helps you <coughs> bless me oh yeah, doubt is a very important element in any spiritual belief because it helps you, it shows you how much faith you really have and how much you really believe in these things. Am I too bright? I think it's okay. How do you view other religious beliefs slash practices? I think if you have a religious belief, if you have a spiritual belief, if it's helping you be a better person and it's helping you continue to improve as a person, I think that's great like as simple as it is what i appreciate about fallen dafa is that it doesn't discount any other practices it does discount like fake practices because there are a lot of um like fake qigong masters and fake gurus these days so that for sure does not acknowledge but any religious and spiritual practice that's rooted in what's good and what's upright that i believe in and support 100 there were slash are so many gurus that were not what they say how to deal with this kind of description this comment got cut off because ig story q a little card only lets you see a certain amount the founder of falandafa talks a lot about this in john fallon about how especially when qigong was becoming very popular in china so qigong isn't just a falandafa thing there's many many different schools of qigong of course there's like positive and like upright schools and of course there's like people who are spreading qigong so that they can get famous and they can make money and that will fall into the fake guru so yeah just exercising and if like bing 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 if it's like something is off then listen to yourself and you know don't trust that and i i'd like to say for the most part this is just from my understanding and i actually really do believe this most people who claim themselves to be gurus probably aren't and most people who are teaching certain spiritual things probably shouldn't be teaching it because yeah they could have teachers they could have masters they could have whatever but from my understanding most of these practices aren't in the world that we currently live in now where morality i really believe has slid down significantly a lot of people may initially come out to teach these things for the greater good and for good principles and for good values but in our society regardless of whatever profession you're in regardless of whatever your job is the moment you are tempted with money and fame and all that stuff it's very easy to go down another path the not as bright path and it's very easy to be you know yeah so i would just say for the most part exercise your caution and be on guard with most of these things do you think that we need spirituality in order to lead a fulfilling life slash to grow and develop as a person um I mean, to each his own, I know I need spirituality to live a fulfilling life and to grow and develop as a person, but maybe not for other people. I think it definitely helps. When you are having a bad time, how do you reconnect yourself with God? When I'm having a bad time, how do I reconnect myself with God? Um, I just talk to him. Yeah, like hey i'm struggling can you help me and i think usually for the most part it helps 
a lot. Difference between faith and destiny. So I feel like faith is something that is in your control. Like you can have faith, you can exercise faith, you can have a lot of it or you can have not a lot of it. Destiny, I feel like is something that's out of your control. It's something that happens to you, happens for you. It's something that is like pre-arranged if you believe in destiny. Okay. I've often felt very spiritual and fulfilled, but I don't even know where to start looking to explore any tips. I think we talked about this a good amount. This is the last question, by the way. This is probably a very long video, so thank you guys for sticking around this late. Um, as with everything I talked about, I think it's important to start asking yourself questions. If you're happy, why am I happy? Can I be happier? If you're not happy, if you're unfulfilled, if you're sad, if you're like feeling any certain way, ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Is there anything I can do about it? If you've been living your life one way, think about, are there different ways that I can live my life? Are there little elements in my life that I can change, that I can move around to, for me to be able to be more happy, to be more fulfilled, to be more, I don't know, to feel like I'm living a more meaningful life? Through asking yourself questions, trying to find answers to your questions, this process will be like, it's gonna ping pong, ping pong ball back and forth. <laughs> It's gonna ping pong back and forth where you'll have a question, you'll find an answer, and then there'll be more questions, you'll find more answers. And eventually, I'm getting out of breath, I'm getting really excited. Eventually, it'll lead you to where you're supposed to be. Life isn't a linear thing as much as we want it to be. We can't go from being not okay to okay and just this like, I mean, it happens for some people, but it's very, very not common. So it will be like a and then you'll eventually get to where you want to be and just like me i went wee, 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 and i got here and even though i found my thing what i realized is that you're continuing to go like wee, 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 because you're continually tested on how much faith you have do you really believe how much do you believe with all of this i hope you guys have gained some inspo and encouragement that everything is going to be okay and that if things haven't been the best it will and it can get better if you put in the work if you put in the time to find out what you want find out what you're going through find out where you want to be and how you can get closer to all those things because at the end of the day i always say this you know yourself best even though you may not believe it if you really take the time and sit yourself down and ask yourselves the questions the easy questions the hard questions any questions um you'll surprise yourself really like how i surprise myself all the time <laughs> Alrighty, this has been a really long video and i'll see you guys next week hopefully it'll be a uh, the manifesto video i haven't gotten started on that but it's coming all right